Okay, but we've got to prepare for the thin is in culture shift. Uh, thin is in is a threat to our society at large. This will not just increase the rate of eating disorders among teens and young children, but quite often thin inspiration, this obsession with thinness, is what recruits children and teens to the alt-right. Oh, oh my God, thin is in thing. It makes my eyes roll. Here we are again. I feel like we uh, millennials live through this trauma. Hi, y'all. So, recently I was on TikTok, as you do, as I do way too much now, but I was looking at TikTok and I heard rumblings of a cultural shift that was slowly starting to occur. Specifically, these people on TikTok were warning others about this cultural shift. So, when I refer to culture in this video, I just want to be clear, I'm talking about US-centric culture because that's where I live, that's where I have the most amount of context, just making that very clear. So this cultural shift is called Thin Is In, which the name in and of itself is a huge yikes, but that's a digression, we can't stick on the name. But this trend glorifies thinness and moves away from the body positivity or even the body neutrality movements that we've seen over the last decade. So this trend moves away from those two movements and instead favors a thinner, skinnier body type. And let me just pause right here. There is nothing wrong with being naturally skinny. I do not want people to think that this is against people who are naturally thin, that I'm coming for people because of their body types. That is not the case, but usually culture coming back in, trends coming back in is not a bad thing, but in this particular instance, this cultural shift has the potential to be extremely damaging and harmful to a lot of people. So the thin is in cultural movement is a glorification of weight loss, anorexia, detoxing, and an obsession with clean or healthy eating. And in general, this trend promotes a unhealthy relationship with food, which is why we're discussing it. And this unhealthy relationship with food that it preaches is also really concerning because this trend is focused mainly at younger kids, preteens, teens, people who are very impressionable. So these messages about thinness and body hatred are infiltrating the minds of these young children during formative years of their lives. And extended messaging like this can lead to body dysmorphia, eating disorders, lifelong mental illness, and that's not just being extremist. I think a lot of people have had to deal with their childhood ramifications of being told what is desirable from society and how that has impacted them as they've grown into their adult life. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's back it up and just describe how we got to this point. What happened? How did this thin is in cultural movement actually start? So as I mentioned, culture and fashion are cyclical, meaning that things that were considered cool or popular trends in the past come back around and become popular again. Examples include cargo pants, claw clips, bucket hats, things like that. I think we've all been like, oh, our mother's clothing in the 70s is all of a sudden very cute and very chic, even the 80s, things like that. Trends come back. That's nothing new. But the fashion trend we're going to discuss in relationship with this thin is in cultural movement is the Y2K fashion trend. Now you may have heard of this Y2K fashion trend via TikTok or you may have lived it yourself the first time when it was cool and popular back in the early thousands. So if you haven't heard of Y2K fashion, is defined by the early thousands trends, including low rise jeans, juicy track suits, bandana tops, chunky sneakers, mini skirts, toddler t-shirts, baguette purses, and retro sunglasses. Think Paris Hilton, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears walking the red carpet during the early thousands. Iconic fashion. And by itself, Y2K fashion is not a bad thing. It's actually, in my opinion, quite cute. There are some problematic aspects of it that we'll get into. On a surface level, the Y2K fashion aesthetic is not a bad thing. However, it goes hand in hand with troubling body ideals and is not inclusive of all body sizes or types. According to Gianluca Russo, a columnist and author of The Power of Plus, Inside Fashion Size Inclusivity, Evolution, Y2K style is largely grounded in thinness. And we can see this ideal during the initial run of Y2K fashion. When it was initially popular, Y2K fashion valued 
thinness and slimness above all. The ideal was to be thin. Being even slightly over a size two was considered to be a moral failing and people were demonized for putting on even a small amount of weight. Needless to say, fat phobia during this time was rampant. Specifically, there were no plus size models or people empowering women to love their bodies. The body positivity and body neutrality was set aside in favor of a slim physique. And some companies didn't even offer plus sizes. And if they did, the clothing they did offer was not cute or not in the styles that were actually trendy. Fat shaming was normalized and media was often complicit in making women feel bad for even just having a body. I mean, I could go off on a whole tangent talking about media representation about people who had bigger bodies because a lot of the jokes in the early thousands, late 90s were simply making fun of plus size people for just existing. And putting actors and actresses in fat suits to make fun of plus size people was also a common trope, which is especially relevant considering that Brandon Fraser's new movie, The Whale, has come out, which also has him being in a fat suit, which has caused some commotion and some mixed messages about if we've really taken a step in body neutrality because it's still propagating these really harmful and negative stereotypes about people who exist in bigger bodies. But that's a tangent that we won't go on right now. Simply put, during the thousands, thin was certainly in. So based on this body ideal, it was no surprise that there was a rise in eating disorders during this time. Teenagers and young adults were exposed to toxic messaging about aspiring to be thin, and they were given the message that they should try to achieve this ideal of being slim through any means necessary. People were told to ignore their hunger cues, to drink water instead of eating, and that they were actually bored and not hungry, and in general, they were told to hate any part of their body that wasn't perfectly smooth or flat. It was better in the eyes of society and most people for them to starve than to not be considered thin, which is so demented. Society, I thought that we had progressed past this thin as in worship and that we had moved towards a more body positive or body neutral position. However, here we are again. Since the early thousands, there has been a body positivity, body neutrality movement, which focuses on valuing all bodies, regardless of size and ability. At the same time of these two movements, we've seen in the last few years, we've seen this rise of the slim, thick Instagram baddie, a la the Kardashians, and a rise in Brazilian butt lifts, which is a procedure designed to increase the appearance of people's butts. So generally in the last few years, there's been an increase of loving your body, but also just like bodies being more robust and rotund, if you wanna say it in that kind of way. However, Gen Z has change the narrative just a little bit. Specifically, influencers on TikTok have rediscovered Y2K fashion. And since this reignited interest in Y2K fashion, there has been a slow transition into valuing thin influencers. There's also cultural trends and projections that this thin is in, cultural worship will also come back in along with the Y2K fashion. So for this section, I wanna just kind of rapid fire go through a few trends that I have seen and how they fit into to the cultural comeback of the thin is in culture. I'm just gonna lay it out here and we will get into the specific consequences a little bit later. So this is just kind of like what I've seen that have been a bit troubling to me and a little bit of like an indication that this thin is in cultural movement is going to become relevant again. So this is just some of the examples I've seen. So the trend I first saw that kind of signaled to me and a lot of other folks the impending thin girl Y2K aesthetic was coming was the rumored return of low-rise jeans. If you've ever tried on high-rise jeans versus a low-rise jean, you would know how different these two cuts are, with the high-rise being generally flattering on almost every body type, while the low-rise only generally looking good on people who are thin or who have long torsos and limited body fat. Oftentimes, these low-rise pants are paired with baby shirts, which are crop top t-shirts, basically shrunken down t-shirts, which expose most, if not all, of the midriff, which, again, I'm gonna be honest, are very cute. It's a cute look. I understand it. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I don't understand. It's, it is cute. It is cute. Even though these two styles look cute and can be modeled perfectly on plus-size people, they are intended by the fashion designers for thin people. 
So the trends indicate a growing transition because of these low rise genes coming back in vogue, a transition to valuing this look on thin people. So the rise of these low rise genes was an indicator to a lot of people that wait a second, fashion is moving towards a less flattering for all body types movement. It might be moving towards more of a like glorifying thinness. So that was a lot of people's first indications that this was coming back, this revival of thin is in. Another trend I noticed that emphasizes thinness was the clean, healthy girl aesthetic. So this trend focuses on cleanliness, low maintenance, and minimalism when it comes to makeup, clothing, and a general lifestyle. Now, just based on the name alone and the actual description of this aesthetic, you can see that there is a lot of problematic themes with this trend. Making a binary between a clean and dirty lifestyle is just such a harmful dichotomy. Additionally, this trend co-ops a lot of the aesthetics of BIPOC women in the 90s and whitewashes it completely. But it also glorifies skinniness with the clean girls and the clean girl influencers eating minimal amounts of food, undergoing juice cleanses and detoxes, and generally inhabiting skinnier, thinner bodies. The entire trend and aesthetic removes people of color and plus size people, which becomes a problem because these people who are getting popular off of clean girl fit a demographic and an aesthetic and look a certain way and that is on purpose. And I think that that is an important thing to keep in the back of your mind that none of this is just like happenstance. It is a intentional thing that these influencers that look a certain way are being pushed out and kind of like put onto people's for you pages. It's an intentional thing and it's something to take note of. Speaking of influencers, we can't move on from this section of examples without mentioning the Kardashians. Despite what you may personally think of the whole Kardashian-Jenner clan and their influence on body standards, it cannot be ignored that they have an influential presence on the societal body ideals. They were influential in promoting the slim, thick Instagram body look in the mid-2010s, even though you can say that their whole family has co-opted that look from women of color and stolen black culture for themselves, which again, major asterisks, that is a huge deal. I've talked about it briefly. Other pr creators do it so much better. But putting that aside, they have recently been spotted by eagle-eyed viewers and followers to have had a change in appearance. This is not uncommon with them. They change appearance a lot. However, Kim and Chloe specifically have stepped out looking noticeably thinner, causing some sources to speculate and some fans to theorize that they have had many gastric surgeries or endoscopy surgeries, which basically causes people to lose weight by a actual surgery. Even though I understand where these fans are coming from, speculating on a person's body, specifically a woman's body, is nobody else's business. I think it's rude to call out when someone has gained weight. I think it's rude to call out a person when they've lost weight because we don't know the reasoning. We don't know what they're going through. I just think that the constant commentary on their bodies can be hurtful and speculating on surgeries can be a very harmful standard to set. We wouldn't want to be doing that to normal people who aren't in the spotlight. So I only wanted to bring them up here because if this is true and that they're going through a certain procedure to appear thinner or to lose weight, this is very harmful and it sets a dangerous standard for society and for young people who look up to them. And this leads me to my next point. As I mentioned earlier, when Y2K fashion was first in vogue in the early 2000s, there was a rise in eating disorders. And a lot of people had poor relationships with food because of the messaging back then. And this is exactly my fear with this round of Y2K fashion and this thin is in culture. The very real concern is that impressionable young people will see this trend of Y2K fashion and the things that are implied with this fashion. But when they see these trends and potential start glorifying and trying to attain these skinny body types, they might be doing this by going against their natural biology or ignoring their hunger cues. So as people scroll their For You pages or their Instagrams looking at these trends, it is easy to come across 
thin influencers talking about how low rises are in and showing off the best Y2K fashion. And so while scrolling and seeing all of these messages, a young person might just like think of it uncritically. I mean, it's really difficult when you're receiving these signals from people that you trust or look up to that a certain trend is in and that it will only look good on you if you fit into this specific mold or if you look a certain way. I mean, just on one hand, not being able to fit into a trend, not feeling stylish or cool is psychologically damaging on so many fronts, but this can also potentially lead to dangerous habits. And this is not a new concept that women's fashion and fashion trends are intrinsically linked to an ideal body type. And it's an unfortunate aspect of our culture. Women and female presenting people are constantly judged on their body type and admonished for not fitting into the ideal of what a woman should look like. Constant comparison to other women and body Body shaming from peers can severely impact the life course of many young girls and left undiscussed and unchallenged. This kind of messaging and this kind of culture can lead to eating disorders, low self-esteem, and other mental health issues that may stick with them for their whole life. However, I also want to be clear that it is not so simple as saying that Y2K fashion equals bad. It is a body ideals and the cut of the clothing that will reward thinness and demonize fat. That is the problem, and that is the inherent part of Y2K fashion. And this trend is ushering in the thin as in culture. The garments themselves and their cuts are made intentionally. They're not just developed, they don't grow on trees. They are created intentionally by people. So there are people intentionally making these cuts or they intentionally made them at first and they're just rehashing them now, but they intentionally made those cuts to flatter specific body types. They didn't make them to be appealing to everyone. They didn't think of everyone. They didn't want everyone wearing their clothing. And and this is also not to say that everyone who wears Y2K fashion or who aspire to have the clean girl aesthetic are bad people. Again, the same thing is like people who are naturally slim and skinny are not bad people. There's nothing wrong with that. This video is simply to call out the fat phobia, racism, and misogyny that are inherent in these fashion trends and apply a critical lens to a cultural trend that might be coming back. So where does this lead us? I think that this trend is very scary for a lot of people like I said up front. First and foremost, don't let anyone say that your feelings are not valid. I think there's a lot of great TikToks, some of which inspired me to make this video about what you can do, but the biggest one they say is try to start now and just unfollow some accounts that you think might be problematic, some that might cause you pain. I would say that's a general rule, just unfollow things that cause you pain. Unfollow people who are putting things out there into the internet that make you feel bad about yourself because comparison is the thief of joy. Just do that to start with. Also, I would say that trends are not forever. I think that that's a really important thing, that this is just a trend. This is not going to be a lifelong thing, but it can still be very scary and very real in the moment, and I totally understand. But just because a trend is popular doesn't mean you have to do the trend. I think that that's pretty self-explanatory, but it's hard. When a lot of people are doing or giving into a trend, to emulate those people is really important, especially to people who are going through formative years of their life, adolescence, things like that. However, just because they do a trend does not mean that you should also do a trend. Just be aware of your boundaries and know yourself that if you don't feel comfortable in a piece of clothing, do not put it on. If you're not feeling comfortable, don't put on the garment. And I guess my also recommendations is if possible, try to reach out to professional help. I know that that is limiting for a lot of people. However, if you have the means and resources, whether it be just a friend or a family member or somebody that you can talk to, if you are able to afford therapy, please go and see a therapist. Talk to them about how you're feeling surrounding these trends. It is okay to be scared and worried about a trend that does not value your body and does not value you as a person. And I guess at the end of the day, just take solace in the fact that like not everybody is going to be abiding by this. And at the end of the day, we'll all just have each other. But that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, leave a follow, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.